back, everybody, to another fantastic episode of the Every Pokemon Episode Ever podcast. I am one of your hosts, Wrestling Chris G, and on the other line with me is the movie star himself. It's good old Dougie Fresh. Dougie, my man, how you doing? I'm doing about 60% better than I was when we sat down to start this. <laughs> Six, only 60%? Well, well I'm... I could have just been 50, but I've, <laughs> I've bumped it 10%. <laughs> so today we are doing episode 71, Lights, Camera, Quaction, and translated from Japanese, Pokemon the Movie. Wow. Okay. That's, that's misleading is what that is. <laughs> Very. So... <clears throat> this episode premiered November 5th, 1998, and here in the States, it premiered October 8th, 1999, Doug. How are you doing today? I'm what good. I, I'm i I'm really good. I was, I was concerned there because I thought we were going right into history, and I was like, I'm not quite ready. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I do have my history moment, but... I mean, uh, I do too, but I just wanted to make sure I had the specifics. Gotcha. So we are recording this on December 22nd, um, 2021, three days before Christmas. Um, so as you heard in the previous episode, um, we are, uh, we're getting these these filler episodes out of the way. To, we're, we're just going to fly through a lot of these fillers. Okay, yeah, I was going to wonder if I had to repeat myself, and I was like, I don't know if I can do that. No, no, you don't have to. So, yes, this is your second filler episode that we're going to be flying through to get you get you to what you want to listen to, and it's only going to take us three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you and I hope you enjoyed your rare dose of Canto on a on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> People are like, what the hell? We're supposed to be getting our black and white fix. So, all right. But um, other than that, um, my kids are upstairs. Uh, my son is out of school now. He's on winter break as of today. So he's feeling extra good. He was upstairs playing some Spider-Man. Um, me and him ran through the Simpsons arcade game together and he was high-fiving me because he's like, we did it on the first try. So Doug, when, when he sees you again, he's going to say that and you're just going to say, good for you. <laughs> is, is he lying to me? Is that what the No, is? no, no, he's not lying. We, okay. we literally ran through the game. The game only has eight levels. So... Right. Uh, we literally ran through it. It took us 45 minutes, but we got we got through the entire Simpsons arcade game. And we're talking about the OG. We're talking about the one that you would play at your local game store or at a Chuck E. Cheese or any of that. And movie theater, you know. Yeah, movie theaters or any of that. Like any place that had video game um, consoles there. I, I'm talking about that. So yes, we have that here in this house. The next game is Ninja Turtles. So Oh, that, nice. That that's what that's what me and Little Man are going to be running through tomorrow, hopefully. So I don't and, and that one I've never beaten. I've never beaten the Ninja Turtles um arcade game. And I, I see that there's what, two or three of them. Which one should I should sh which one should I play though? Well, I mean, you know how I operate. If it's if there's a series, you start with one and you go from there. Okay. So yeah, he we 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 did that earlier. He played some OG Mortal Kombat, the very first Mortal Kombat that was made, and then he played some <laughs> NBA Jam and wanted to get into a better version. So I I turned on NBA 2K19 that we have for the PS five upstairs. And, and he played that for all of like 20 minutes and was like, yeah, this is hard. And he turned that off and started playing some Spider-Man. <laughs> so oh, these, these damn kids today with their no attention spans <laughs> for real. 
but um but yeah um i i figured i'd just educate people with that i'll i'll keep everybody up to date on um whether we get through the teenage mutant ninja turtles but apparently we're going to be flying through some old school games this holiday season so that that's, and that's what me and my son are doing you brought it up and this is not going to become this is not going to jump off to a big discussion because we're still in that window um we have seen spider-man <laughs> we have yes um and since this is going out next tuesday uh we are still well within that window of hey guys don't be dicks um so we will not speak on that because you did not click on this pokemon podcast to get spider-man spoilers so no so yes we have seen it um yes it was a great movie and that's all i'm gonna say um right so yeah i have not seen i have not seen however and i'm saving it as a christmas day treat for myself i have not seen the hawkeye finale Ooh, and i (laughs) and we can we we can talk um i i am five as of tomorrow we'll be able to talk um i am five episodes in on no we won't because i'm saving that until like christmas no, no, but yeah, but we'll we'll be caught up to the oh, same point. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> as 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 of, as we're recording the podcast tomorrow, me and you will be able to sit down and we will be able to actually chit chat because this whole time I've been behind you like one or two episodes, and you're like, I can't talk to you about shit. <laughs> so I just just real just real quick, how how about that fifth episode? That that was a great episode. I'm telling you, man. I don't know. Apparently, this one's going to be the. Apparently, the finale is the longest episode they've put out. It's almost an hour. Oh, really? Okay. Apparently, I mean that's the scuttlebutt. So I, I I do know it's been all over my Android TV. It's been saying, um, stream all episodes now, on uh, for Hawkeye. So I was like, I can go on there and see how long. How long it is? How, th- there's only there's eight episodes total, right? Oh, this this is six. This is the finale. Wait a minute. Wait, hold up. There's only six episodes. There's only six. Oh shit! I, I okay. So I am fully caught up. We can we can actually talk. <laughs> but um, as of tomorrow, we won't be able to talk. But um. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I will be watching that episode tomorrow. Yeah, I am. That's gonna be my my Christmas present to myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna watch it. And I'm not gonna check my phone. I'm not gonna do nothing. Besides replying to a Merry Christmas text. Well, I mean that depends on when you send it. <laughs> You know, my wife cannot wait um, until we are done with Christmas because um, I like Christmas music. She doesn't like at all. Like she despises Christmas music. It is fantastic at the level of, that she just dislikes Christmas music. So <laughs> I my, my favorite Christmas song is the Mariah Carey "All I Want for Christmas Is You"? Of course it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> and people are like, "Wait a minute, that's your?" Yes, yes, it is. I grew up with it, and that is my favorite. That is my jam. And anytime it comes up, um, I know you guys have seen the TikTok videos where that song comes on, and the little kid comes up behind the couch and starts going. And I and I'm not gonna sing it now, but you know that beginning part. <laughs> it just gets you all up in your track. feelings. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no. Um, we only have a few more days, so I only have a few more days to to be listening to my Christmas music until it's banned in this house again until next December. <laughs> And I was going to ask, and I didn't think to do it. Um, so it obviously it gets banned, but when when does the when does the ban get lifted? Uh, after Halloween. 
Well, damn, no respect to I'm things. Joking, I'm joking. I'm <laughs> joking. I was waiting for you to say that. No, it's, it's it's the day after Thanksgiving. The day after Thanksgiving, we put up Christmas. Uh, we put up the Christmas tree, the Christmas lights, and we do all that all that stuff. So we 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 pay respect to Thanksgiving. I saw I saw I saw a TikTok video the other day and it was it was three guys. Well, it was one guy pretending to be three guys and um, he was pretending to be Halloween, um, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And the video started off with by him going, all right, everybody, it's been real. See you next Halloween, everybody. Ha have a good Christmas. And um, the Christmas started playing Christmas music and Thanksgiving jumped in and was like, wait a minute, hold up. And then they both and then um, Thanksgiving and Christmas start rolling their eyes. They're like, oh, this guy. <laughs> I, will, I won't stand for it. I, th I think it's ridiculous. I think Thanksgiving's got a horrible spot. I think, you know, Chris the Christmas meal, honestly, just piggybacks off of Thanksgiving. If you think about it, <laughs> it does. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Thanksgiving starts all the food and you might say, well, Halloween starts the food stuff. No, Halloween puts you into a goddamn diabetic coma. Fucking <laughs> Thanksgiving, at least you're eating some green shit. Yeah. If you say, but I eat green Jolly Ranchers, I'm going to hit you. No, 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 no. Oh, I hate Jolly Ranchers. Ew. Why did you have to say Jolly Ranchers? In general. Ew. Jolly Ranchers? Oh, really? come on. You got you to gotta take that either a watermelon or a blue raspberry Jolly Rancher. No. I, I hate Jolly Ranchers and I hate Tootsie Rolls. Hey, and you do hate Tootsie Rolls. You did say that the other day. And I was... Yeah, I, I hate and, and I hate candy corn. I don't think anybody really likes candy corn. I think I they will tolerate I, candy corn. I will <laughs> see, <laughs> and you will eat anything <laughs> once. <laughs> First time I get food poisoning, it goes to the back of the line. <laughs> so, all right, I think that's enough uh, preamble. Um, thank you for sticking with us, everybody. If not, if you fast forwarded to right now, thank you for still listening to this podcast. All right. So, as I said, um, this episode premiered in the U.S. on October 8th, 1999. And, Doug, my date is from 2012, so I'm guessing I'm going second this week. No, you're actually going first. All right. Well, mine uh, on October 8th, 2012, the film Lincoln, directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Daniel Day-Lewis, um, premiered all, all around the world. And it's very creepy how close they made Daniel Day-Lewis look like Abraham Lincoln. I'm just going to say uh, that. Don't, don't, don't ask me about any specifics on the movie. I watched the movie once and have forgot about 90% of that movie. It's <laughs> long, isn't it? It's very long. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, that, that's my history moment. Um, it's, it's not that far off. It's, it's almost about, um, it's, it's about nine and a half years old now. Wow. Okay. Damn. So, Doug, what is yours? So, on this date, October it is the 8th, right? Yes. October 8th, 2016, the Chicago Cubs defeated the San Francisco Giants by a final score of 5 to 2 to take a 2 to nothing series lead in their NLDS uh, series. 2016, of course, being a monumental year for the Cubs. They finally won the World Series. Um, this was one of the first two steps. Um, you know, the, the Cubs starting pitcher gets a single with the bases loaded, knocks in two runs. Um, up three to nothing at that point. 
Um, he gets knocked out of the game when a when a comebacker to the mound hits him in the arm. They have to take him out. Uh, they bring in a reliever. He proceeds to hit a home run, which would be the first um, postseason home run by a relief pitcher since 1924. Um and they proceeded to take the momentum all the way back. They proceeded to win that game. Uh, they would lose the next game out in San Francisco, but they would close out the series with yeah. a dramatic comeback in game game four. Um, and yeah, that would be the end of the series. I don't want to waste any more bullets because I don't know um, when some, ep some other episodes are going to fall, and I don't want to be wasting uh, material. So... This is where I'm going to end it. All right. Thank you, Doug. All right. So that being said, are you ready to get on into this week's episode? I'm more than ready. <laughs> All right. So I'm getting the episode booted up right here. And we start this week. With none other than Ash Ketchum not training again. I mean, this is a no trend. because because why would he be? Because he's the greatest trainer ever. He's ten years old. He's going to get the stuff. But yeah, but it it's not like he's got like the big ass Pokemon League coming up or something. I know. So so all right, our heroes are. Are walking on a trail, and then we see good old Jigglypuff. So Jigglypuff is going to play a role in this week's episode. We think. We think. <laughs> um, then we get a lights, camera, quaction title card, and from here we go straight into our episode, where it looks like our heroes are walking up to a campsite. And Ash is like, he's like, I'm going to be the world's greatest Pokemon ma master. And Brock pops up. He's like, just like my chili, huh, Doug? And um, uh, the mere mention of chili completely knocks um, Brock and Misty off their feet. Um, uh, Misty says, you know, next time you make the chili, make it a little chillier because... We've established that she's a wimp and she can't handle, you know, as much as Pepper. Um, and, um, and so, um, they get interrupted by a prospective trainer who is looking for a battle. Um, her name is on the Pippa, Pippa Me Tongue. Um, her name is Katrina, and, you know, she's looking for a battle. Um, Misty has a good line as she's, uh, pulling Brock away by the ear. Um, she says, you know, come on now, Romeo. Let's go bury that chili before somebody gets hurt. So they're not just going to pitch the chili. They're going <laughs> to put it in a hole somewhere. Um, yes, but we find out that Katrina is also looking for a battle. And, of um, course, Ash is ready. And, you know, she says, oh, well, let's skip the small talk and get right to it. And write you. Yes, she sends out Raichu, Ash sends in Pikachu, and they're getting ready to do this battle, and then Team Rocket hops into the into the frame. They have a net, and they grab what looks like Pikachu, and they think it's Pikachu, but they look down, and they got Raichu. And Raichu thunderbolts Team Rocket, and and she goes, way to go. Now mega kick them. And Raichu comes over. And from here, we go, we hear someone go, and cut. 
And then everyone looks over and there's a TV crew filming this Pokemon battle. Doug? I was walking in saying, that's perfect, that's perfect. Um, you know, cut, you know, print it. And he goes, he looks over, he looks down at Pikachu, says, you're in my way, he moves him. Um, we see Team Rocket's in a pile, smoldering on the ground. Um, and he's setting up for the next shot. And he says, you know, let's get a shot of the villains. And he's got Meowth, he's got the, the spiral eyes. And... <laughs> <clears throat> and uh jesse and james are offended they say hey look here buddy nobody calls us losers um and the director goes into his version of the team rocket motto and and jesse's completely caught off guard she's like hey listen buddy those are our lines yeah and then he he <laughs> He's like, to restore spectacle and imagination, to make great epics of hate and love, to direct the best films you've ever heard of. Cleavon Spielbank. So this is obviously a take off of Steven Spielberg. <laughs> which, 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 which is fitting considering your uh, uh, moment in history. Yes. <laughs> and like he's you planned it. Oh, it's like it's like I knew what I was talking about, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I am the winner of the Golden Growlith. He's like the best director at the Flea Color Film Festival. He's like, light, camera, hit your mark when I call action. Prepare to fight. And Missy just walks in. She's like, who the hell is he? And that's just like, I don't know. And he's like, oh, all the kids today care about are those crazy cartoon shows. Just completely taken back. But Brock knows who he is. He's like, Mr. Spielbunk, you're my hero. You directed my absolute favorite movie of all time. I saw what you ate last Tuesday, Doug. Yeah, and you know Katrina's like, oh, you know, I think I've saw that one, and you know his spirits are lifted a little bit. He's like, oh, there might be some hope for humanity, but we find out that those movies, while popular with the with the movie going public, were kind of duds in the box office sense of the the practice yes so and he and he's he's oh, dejected sorry. and he says um you know um and team rocket's like you know what what's a famous director out here in the middle of a field and he's like i'm a i'm searching for talent and this is when team rocket you know turn on the the charms and they're like you know you found a leading man and you know jesse says i can i can play warm and sincere and and uh spielbunk's like well that's all well and good but my next production is going to be a pokemon actors only and team rocket's immediately like ah oh, shit <laughs> and he says the star of my film is going to be none other than wiggly tough and Wiggly Tuff comes in the frame. She's all smitten. And everyone's looking at Wiggly Tuff. And they're like, um, a Wiggly Tuff? <laughs> and Meow Meow says there at last. He's like, that if that's the star, it's gonna be a real snooze fest. And it's at this point, Wiggly Tuff doesn't take kind to those words and just starts double slapping him. Just the five fingers set of the face and all this you know smack oh. <laughs> so Charlie Murphy. You know. <laughs> so is that that boy that um Brock is like Wiggly Tough could be a superstar I'd be careful not to step on any of Wiggly Tough's lines <laughs> And Brock just looks, he's like, look at that face. 
hard to believe something so cute could be such a brute. And Wiggly Tuff takes offense to that as well. Just slap, 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 slap. Bits, bit, bit, bits, bro. Slap, 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 slap. Yeah, it just friggin... Brock goes down. Just me, Alf, and Brock are just in a heap. And um, Ash says, Wiggly Tuff's kind of touchy. And um, Jesse says, a real prima donna and misty under her breath but obviously loud enough for jesse to hear says it takes one to know one and jesse's like oblivious she's like what does that mean and james just has his face of this bitch <laughs> so we, we then find out from mr spielbong that the movie was supposed to be a love story between wiggly tough and abra but Abra got fed up with Wiggly Tuff's attitude on the set that it teleported away and they never saw Abra again. So now he's on the look for another Pokemon to play Abra's lines. So, it, and, and at this point, Wiggly Tuff, I mean, not Wiggly Tuff, Jigglypuff um, is looking, looking in from the corner of a tree and all Wiggly Tuff sees is a stage lights and wants to be a part of this movie now this is this is going to be jigglypuff's big break doug and it looks like you know we're getting ready for like the open casting call and you know we've got a got a doe duo on stage we've got a hip only we've got a random toros um we've got katrina's uh right we've got pikachu we've got uh, Meow, we've got um, Arbok and Weezing, and Togepi's got stars in its eyes as well. But Misty says you might be a bit too young. Um, <laughs> and then of course, who who pops out of the Pokeball, Doug? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because um, you know Brock throws out Volpix and um. Misty's about to throw out Star You because Star's in the name. But everybody's favorite unwanted Pokemon, Psyduck, pops out of the ball. And apparently you don't get a redo. No. Uh, uh, apparently you can enter one Pokemon in at a time, which sounds stupid, to be honest. Well, why doesn't everyone just bring in their Pokemon and you just pick the best Pokemon that's there? Right? Well, you see, that would make sense, but, you know, <clears throat> pardon me, we've only got like 14 minutes left in this episode. <laughs> True that. So, the Pokemon start doing their dance, and you you have Pikachu and Raichu uh, doing a dance together. All the other Pokemon are trying to dance, but don't really seem like they know what they're doing. Psyduck's over here, and wagging its tail... Volpix is jumping. Psyduck, Psyduck was twerking before it was cool. Yes. <laughs> Volpix is just jumping up in the air, just being all sorts <laughs> of cute. Just, just, Volpix, Volpix, Volpix. <laughs> and all these Pokemon are just having a good time. And Mr. Spielbunk is like, all right, good, good, good. I've narrowed everything down to these seven Pokemon. And then he starts naming them out. Pikachu and Raichu. And they they hey. were and Ash is like, yes, Arbok and Weezing. And hey. they're like, yay. And they're just Arbok is squeezing the mess out of Jesse breaking every rib that she has. And Weezing and James are just having a moment. And uh Volpix and Psyduck. And then hey. They, they both just look confused and look over at the camera and Brock and Misty high five and last but not least. And then you see all the Pokemon um, still dancing and, you, and we get a close up of me out that he's like, I'm blowing my big break. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And he's like, I choose Meowth. And Meowth just rejoicing. He's like, he chose me and runs over to Mr. Spielbunk and just starts licking Spielbunk in the face. 
Doug. And then <clears throat> then we're at the next phase of the audition, which is a, a singing audition. And you know, Meowth's ready. He's got a he's got his ukulele. He's he's a he's he honestly should be a shoe in for this whole damn thing because he can talk, if we're being honest about it. Yeah. Um he should. But and, but as you said, that's too easy, Doug. Right. And you know, we're getting ready, and then who should cut in between everything? Everybody's favorite Jigglypuff. And everybody reacts because they've dealt with Jigglypuff, so they know, you know, oh shit, this isn't about to be good. Um and they try to stop it, but of course that doesn't work. Jigglypuff sings, everybody in the vicinity goes to sleep. And Jigglypuff um, just gets all sorts of pissed off, takes takes its marker and just starts to draw over everybody. And then, you know, everybody's waking up and seeing that there's marks on their faces and oh my god and oh it's terrible and the director's got a little mirror and wiggly tough is apoplectic and you know so they take a take a short break to schmutz everybody off and um we're back in the pro and the director says you know you have to have good chemistry with wiggly tough because wiggly tough um and I think you said it earlier, Wigglytuff's kind of locked in. I mean, obviously, this is centered around, you know, a, a romantic story centered around Wigglytuff. Yes. And, um... Meowth, Meowth is a dumbass getting ready to have his his star in the in the show. And he goes, I'm sorry, Wigglytuff, but I work alone. And Wigglytuff just takes offense to that. Just, Meowth already got double slapped but he gets double slapped again <laughs> and he and um is a you know this wiggly tough is more tough than wiggly which i thought wasn't a bad line i mean it's not good by any stretch but it's not a bad line and then at least he said it under his breath this time this is true <laughs> and then uh team rocket i think senses that you know, um, Weezing and Arbok are their last hope. So they say, you know, sing your hearts out. And they sing, and it's horrible. And, and Wigglytuff tells them as much because he smacks the mess out of them as well and sends them piling into Team Rocket. And Wigglytuff's up there just looking all sorts of diva. Yeah, and the Mr. Spielbuck then announces Meowth, Arbok, Weezing, you three are out of the film. And Jesse just gets mad. She's like, how dare you how, uh, how dare you cast cast us out of your movie? Uh, Arbok and Weezing, let's teach them um let's teach them a lesson. Wait a minute, where did they go? And then they're looking around, and Arbok and Weezing are just defeated and they're just walking away because they're they're sad that they're not going to be in this movie. Their, their dreams are crushed. Yes. Because, I mean, um, yeah. they, they have feelings. And, um, you know, so Jesse and James have to run after them, you know, being reassuring. You know, you're stars to us. You can always do television. Um, you know, we're your biggest fans. In fact, we're your only fans. And get your minds out of the gutter, people. Um <laughs> and I think everybody else on stage kind of catches the vibe of what Wigglytuff's about. We're like, yeah, we don't think we want any part of this. And the only Pokemon not to move is uh, Psyduck because Psyduck, Psyduck has no idea is... what's going on. Correct. And um, Spielbunk's like, well. Looks like we've got our co-star, and everybody's shocked, even though he's the only fella standing up there. So, it's at this point that we get the who's that Pokemon, and who is it? None other than Snorlax. Snorlax relevant to the next episode? No. Damn at, least, at least I don't think so. The next episode is the is Meowth's uh, backstory. So I don't think Snorlax plays a role in that episode. Well, shit. 
I know. So say we what you will about black and white, but black and white at least has their shit together. I know. <laughs> so um, we come back from from the interrupted co- commercial break, and Misty is hugging Psyduck. She's like, she's like, I'm glad that you don't have any brains, Psyduck. <laughs> <laughs> and um, everyone's well, Brock is like, he's like, hey. Maybe it's not dumb after all. Like that, th- these are so they're they're so mean to Psyduck. Like I I want to know in Psyduck's head if he's ac- actually really this this like dumb. Because I want to know like when he turns into Golduck, is he gonna remember all these things that people <laughs> said about him when when he was uh, Psyduck? Like I think we're gonna have a Charizard situation on our hands. Oh, I, I fully think so. I mean, but sadly, we never get that episode because he he never evolves before Misty is no longer here. I mean, we get Misty later on, but M- Misty don't have no Golda with her, at least. Son of a gun. I know. Maybe we'll get it later on, but we never get that answer. But she's so mean to Psyduck. So... <clears throat> Mr. Spielbunk says that he's ready for the first big scene and he's like I can describe this scene in one word brilliant brilliant and Brock is little... like okay and then, the, then he goes through to give a little preview for everyone he's like this is my own original story about two love struck Pokemon He's like, as the movie begins, Wigglytuff and Psyduck have just started going out. Psyduck brings Wigglytuff home after their first date. Psyduck serenades our heroine under a full moon. And he's like, it looks like smooth sailing romance wise, but their feuding families want them apart, want to drive them apart. We love each other so. Why can't you live and let us love? Then heartbreak. As a stray arrow heads, uh, as a stray arrow heads straight for Wigglytuff. Duck, duck, duck. And then everyone, he's like, Psyduck leaps in the arrow's path in the nick of time and takes a square in the head. But Psyduck has been mortally ru- ruined. It sighs its last sigh in Wigglytuff's arms. And the tragic brings the two families together. So if I'm not wrong, Doug, this sounds a whole lot like Romeo and Juliet. It sure is. <laughs> no, there's no sounds a whole lot about it. It is. And, the o- the and only this- thing is Wigglytuff seems to live in this movie, even though Romeo and Juliet both die in theirs. Well, I mean, if we're if we're being true, I mean, they killed themselves. Yeah, they did. This they- is Psyduck getting killed by an arrow. <laughs> by a manky. <laughs> yeah, famously uh, known for his arrow attacks. <laughs> And he's like, oh, I can see it now. It'll win tons of awards and clean up at the box office. And Misty's like, that that movie does not sound original. And Brock's over here crying. He's like, it sounds like a masterpiece. Doug, you want to take it from here? Yeah, I'd be, Ash is, Ash is also crying. He's like, I'd be honored to work on the movie for free. And I mean, they're just completely swept up in the moment and misty's just on the floor going how am i the only one that sees any kind of sense and (laughs) then we go we go up a little bit and we see team rocket is plotting their revenge yes because they want to um be in this movie but they're gonna ruin the first scene he's like hmm lucky day is it they won't feel so lucky when they see their new co-stars. Arbok, you too, wheezing. <laughs> and 
and but but Arbach and Weezing are still defeated. Because they want to be in there. He's like, Jesse's like, don't tell me you two are still moping around. And Arbach is like, Arr. And Weezy's like, Weezy. And then um, freaking Meow translates for him. He's like, they had their hearts set on stardom. But the movies chewed them up and spit them out. Like yesterday's popcorn. And then they both get slapped in the face by Jesse and James, leaving them on the ground. And Jesse's like, are you going to let show business beat you or are you going to beat it? It's a very long climb to the start um, to the stairs of stardom. And there is no elevator, even though there is. I mean, you can be an overnight sensation. You could just take that elevator all the way to the top. Yeah. Or just... you could be a son of a famous actor or something. I mean, look, look, look at Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber made a, videos on YouTube, got noticed by Usher, and look at where he's at now. I mean, Olivia Rodrigo wouldn't be a thing if it wasn't for TikTok. Exactly. Oh, don't tell me you can't cheat your way to the top. <laughs> Not cheat, but you know. <laughs> just, just soar your way to the top. So, Doug, you want to go, go on this next scene? We're almost done. Oh, yeah, um, after that little um, pep talk, um, we're, we're getting ready um, for another scene in the movie, and we find out that this is the climactic battle scene, and um, uh, the uh, Spielbunk says, I always shoot the ending first. And this is kind of a common practice um is it yeah i mean not necessarily shooting you know backwards or anything but sometimes you just shoot with um you know what's available or you know sometimes you got to work and you say oh you know you've got a lot of scenes lined up today that need sunlight but there's going to be rain for the next two days oh we can shoot x y and z that take place inside this building or whatever Dang. So, I mean, and that's why the editors get the big bucks, honestly. Oh, or they should. Yeah. So, he's like, this is the big confrontation. I want emotion. He's like, quiet on the set, please. Okay, let's fire up those lights. You got some Magnemites holding up the lights, which, which in a way, is kind of brilliant. I mean, it saves you out electricity. All you need are some Magnemites. It, to generate electricity for you? Yeah. Just saying. I mean, give and, me give me a, a magnemite. I'll 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 breed a bunch of those and they they can keep up my electricity on this house. Electricity is a the electricity bill's a bitch. Uh, the utilities in general are a son of a bitch. Yes. So water. how am I how am I paying for water? Water is free. <laughs> you're paying for it to get filtered into your water tank. No, oh, that's what that's what the body's for is to filter. <laughs> you dirty man. <laughs> get me off get me off this grid, boy. So all right. Doug um let's go into this next scene. So um the atmosphere is getting set. We've got Two sets of Pokemon get ready to face off, and the and the Spielbunk cues the rain, and this is where Staryu comes in. It starts downpouring, and then he says thunderstorm, and this is where Katrina and Ash are with Raichu and Pikachu, and they use Thunderbolt, and it's all it's you know, and two lightning strikes hit down, and he calls for a charge, and it's just a big old scrap. It's just a, a Donnybrook. It's just Pokemon are popping in and out, and and freaking and, and Wigglytuff's in there trying to use its lines, saying, you know, stop the fight and stop the fight, and st just gets smacked square in the face with Pikachu. And it's just <laughs> you can tell Wigglytuff's like, I can't work like this. This is an unsafe work environment. And then we get smoke and spielbunk says i didn't call for a smoke scene 
And then that's when we find out Team Rocket is here. And they're <clears throat> they're doing their little spiel, but in a way they see the cameras are rolling, so they're trying to be the only ones in the frame as if editing is not a thing. And they're pushing each other in and out of the frame as they're doing their lingo, which is fantastic. And then Ash basically snaps his fingers and gets every Pokemon involved to queue up behind Team Rocket. And Team Rocket is getting jumped by all these Pokemon. And the, the camera guy... Um, Camera guy and Mr. Spielbunk and, said that they need to get in there and separate all this, so they jump in the fight as well. And Ash is sitting on the outside of the frack is going, Pikachu, be careful. And then he turns around and he realizes that the, that the camera's on him. Again, as you said, completely forgetting that editing is a thing. And he gets nervous and he says, I'm Ash from Palette. I want to become the greatest Pokemon master. And... What does Misty say? Misty Brock is and like, Misty... I like to thank all my friends for choosing me as the world's most beautiful and talented Pokemon trainer. <laughs> Ash, or Ash. And then Brock is basically, it pans out, and we find out Brock is basically making love to this camera. Um, <laughs> He's like, I'm Brock. Hello, ladies. And, and then... then... And we see that Meowth is operating a crane, and he has... Um, attracted all the Pokemon that are on the movie set except for Psyduck. Yes, because nobody wants Psyduck. Mm, what is poor, Misty, poor Misty, Psyduck. Says, oh, you can't, Misty says you can't even get kidnapped right. <laughs> Completely uncalled for. I know. Like, she was hoping that Psyduck would get captured because they can save all the Pokemon, but if they accidentally take Psyduck, she'll be like, eh, okay. Yeah, I can. It's fine. <laughs> he'll find his way home. <laughs> he'll, he'll, and nobody's going to want him. Um, so, you know, Team Rocket said, oh, you know, we were always going to steal the movie. We've got the best uh, special effects. And Trina's like, this isn't a movie. Give us our Pokemon back. And, um, Wiggly Tuff's crying out for help. And, um, Misty's like Psyduck. You got to do something. You're the only Pokemon we got out here. And, and Wiggly really Tuff is calling out for help, and Misty's just ringing it in to Psyduck. She's like, she's like, come on, Psyduck. I, I know you got it in you. Get in there. You're the only Pokemon over here that can save. I mean, what what happened to the rest of Ash's Pokemon? Right. You know, where Bulbasaur? Where's Charmander? Where's Where's Swirl? Onyx? Where's Onyx? For God's sake, he didn't get picked for the movie. For um, real, he even he beat. Um, and, and so Psyduck just takes off running. He's just running and running and running because he's confused. He's like, he's Wiggly like, I, I, I'm getting a headache. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> Wiggly Tough is just crying, and all of a sudden Psyduck just stops, just side, and we and we get his confusion and. He's completely taking over the crane. It disengages. The Pokemon uh, safely float down. The freaking crane gets lifted up. Um, Team Rocket is yeah. like, well, that's a wrap for us. I give it two paws down, Meowth says. <laughs> and then we get, looks like Team Rocket's fading out again. And... Psyduck is a conquering hero, but he's used up so much energy, he passes out. He doesn't have black spirals. He's got red spirals, so he should be dead. Yeah. And Wigglytuff runs over. And you can tell how good of an actor she is, but she might be legitimately concerned for Psyduck. And Psyduck wakes up, and he's like, I'm in the arms of a beautiful woman. I might be in heaven. And then... <laughs> But Psyduck doesn't want to be held either. Once he figures out it's Wigglytuff, he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, let me go. I can't be tied down. And Ash is like, all right, let's hear it for Psyduck. Hip, hip, hooray. 
And it's at this point that Spielberg or Spielbunk <laughs> um, realizes that he was still recording and that he got everything um, in the camera. And he's like, that was a fantastic finale. Even though he he only wanted Pokemon in this movie, he got humans and, and it made it all better. Yeah, so his whole premise is shot to shit. I know. So we shoot straight from that, and it's now nighttime, and everyone's sitting around a campfire. Psyduck and Wiggly Tuffer all cozied up, um, sitting by the lake. And Ash is like, he's like, I'm supposed to be training for the Pokemon League, but I got sidetracked again. And Missy's like, yeah, but making a movie was the chance of a lifetime. Plus, you met somebody who shares the same dreams as you, Ash. And he's like, "Mm mm-hmm, I bet you're going to have a great time at the Pokemon League. But don't don't think I'm going to go easy on you, she goes. Doug? Just just because we're friends. And then, you know, they're sitting there, they're all content. And all of a sudden, we hear Spielbunk say, what a great concept. And there's two rival trainers, both train and... Now they meet in the fire, and he says, "This is, this could gross fifty million opening weekend." And, um, Brock immediately is like, "I'd like to star in that movie," and you know, like they get freaking starstruck, like all over again. And as we're fading out, or we're fading away from the fire to um, Wigglytuff and Psyduck. Spielbunk's like it's not an easy job. You'll be swarmed by millions of female fr- female fans, and Brock goes, "I could handle that." Yeah, of course he could. And we get a little bit of narration, and the narrator goes, "The Pokemon League is just a few weeks away. He's got to get moving." Unlike Team Rocket, <laughs> who is literally hanging on on the side of a cliff. Yeah, looking like the looking like a scene from Nightmare Before Christmas. So and then we get the to be continued, and then that's where we leave the episode. Yes. So Doug, I I do have to ask you how how many stars would you give this on your Dougal meter? I mean, it was probably it was solid. I get. Two and a half, maybe? Yeah, I would say about a two. So, all right, Doug. Um, we both have Pokemon packs this week. What, uh, what, what type of pack are you opening up this week? I have Pokemon Evolutions, or Evolving Skies. Okay, perfect. All right, Doug. Open it up. Take the cards out. Take out. Take off the code card on top. And do the top four cars and put them at the bottom. You should be looking at a a um, energy card. Okay, and what's the good shit and what's the bad shit in terms of the code? Um, so if you're looking at the top of the code, if it has a black border, that means you have a good pack. If it has a white border, that means that the pack is dull. Okay, we do have a black border. Okay, good, good, good. So and you said the top four. The top four cards, and you put them down in in the front, which means that you should be when you turn the cards over, you should be looking at an energy. And I'm gonna say fire energy, Doug. Three, four. Hey, you're right. All right. Let's hang go. on the money. <laughs> Bang on the money. I, I know how it feels now when you get it right. I'm Yeah, I should play the lotto tonight. <laughs> because I got the energy right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a... A scroll of the Flying Dragon trainer card. Okay. We have a Finch Finder. Oh, shucks. Uh, We have a lantern. Okay. 
we have a swabble uh yeah a swablu okay we have a a zura okay we have a a cryo a cryo jaw a cryo no okay we have a pet ill. All right. Your last two cards um, should be the rare cards once you get there. Uh, we have a Bergmite. Okay. Got a shiny. I'm just going to spell this. E M O L. G A, Amoga. A shiny Amoga. And we also have a a shiny trainer. Uh, Zanira's resolve. Oh, okay. There you go. Well, good stuff, Doug. <clears throat> good stuff. I have already opened mine. I do have a black border. Doug, what energy am I looking at? Water. Ah, oh, it's a leaf. God damn it. I was ah. thinking leaf too. <laughs> you should have said it. <laughs> I know. So I have a leaf energy. I have a farewell bell trainer card. I have a Linone, a Stantler, a Growlithe, a Phalanx, a Morpeko. A Smeargle, a Quailfish. Uh, my reverse hollow is a Voltorb, and my hollow is a Melmetal. Nice. Okay. I do not have this version of Melmetal, so I am happy. And those are those are my Pokemon packs this week and yours, Doug. Do you have anything that right. else you need to add this week? I don't think so. All right. So with that being said, then go ahead and give your goodbye, Doug. Bye, Doug. And thank you, everybody. And again, don't miss next week on Tuesday and Friday. They're going to be Canto episodes again. Next Tuesday is going to be Go West Young Meowth. And next um, Friday, a week from today, you're going to get um, the master of the unexpected um, and I'm I'm real curious about this episode because I, I know I've seen it but um, the dra Japanese translation says Elite Four Shiba appears so it looks like we're getting a person from the Elite Four in that episode next Friday so all right all right so all right everybody uh, we will see you on Tuesday and we will catch you on the flip side. Have a good night, everybody.